So when I think about Arctic Trucks, I think about a brand that's taken on some of the toughest terrain in the world. Great ride height, big balloon tyres and uh, fancy Fox suspension. Expeditions and adventure. They're monsters, eh? Big, imposing. Big tyres, getting to places where you don't uh, normally be able to get with normal 4x4s. Those extended flared wheel arches and most notably those tyres. An exhilarating monster of the drive. Brutal, big, menacing. It's imposing. And you just want to get inside and just drive it. I like it. And now we finally have that in South Africa. It's very exciting. It's incredible that a tiny country like Iceland can develop and create this globally renowned, no-nonsense, extreme, capable 4x4 company like Arctic Trucks. So it is fantastic to have the CEO, Patrick von Zadal, on the line chatting to us via Skype. Patrick, I thought I'd be chatting to you from some Icelandic town that I wouldn't be able to uh, pronounce, but you are based in the UK. Uh, we are, of course, an Icelandic company, and the heart of the business is absolutely in Iceland, in Reykjavik, in fact, as you said. It's been there for 25 years. But uh, I'm now based in, in the UK, uh, and so are part of the team, and that really is to help our international expansion. And it's important to know that at the beginning, Arctic Trucks was not about exploration and adventure necessarily. It was about necessity. Uh, the terrain in Iceland is, is very, very rough and harsh. It's no, not all about uh, uh, snow and ice, it's also about sand and rocks and, and rough terrain. And for that you need vehicles that can cope. And actually in the beginning, vehicle buyers would convert their cars on their own uh, and that would cause the manufacturers of vehicles issues. So therefore, Arctic Trucks created vehicles that people wanted. Vehicles with larger wheels and tires, uh, with upgraded suspension, and could sell them as, as new vehicles. So, so that's how we started. And then it's of course evolved to a, a very strong exploration brand with a, a large number of expeditions in Antarctica, world records. I think we've covered more than 300,000 kilometers in Antarctica to date. Of course, everybody knows about Top Gear and the Red Hilux that was the first vehicle to, to reach the North Pole. Isuzu came into South Africa in 1972 and then for the pickup started in 1979. So we've been going for quite a long time with, with the Bucky. Uh, we were the, one of the first in the market with the Bucky. You know, when I started my work, I worked in engineering and we were already in the second generation of, of KB D-Max. Single cab pickup, used for farming and for, for mining and industry. And over time we've developed the portfolio to what it is today. And Isuzu is a commercial brand, we sell pickups and trucks and now we've launched the MUX, which gives us an SUV entry. So we consider that Isuzu is, even though it's a Japanese brand, it's a South African-made Bucky for the South African customer. We used to be a Bucky production facility and a truck production facility. We were fortunate enough this year to merge the two under one roof. So now we've got the whole Isuzu family together and we produce it in this plant in Surendale in Port Elizabeth, where we produce about 95 Isuzu D-Max Buckies every day as well as about 18 of our Isuzu trucks, anything ranging from two tons to 32 tons. We've been engineering this pickup for many, many years, and it's made gradual improvements to where it's considered in South Africa one of the key pickups in the market. And that allowed us to go into segments where we wouldn't compete, into a family kind of segment. And we've now seen South African people like a bucky, and we've seen them coming out of passenger cars into buckies. So it gives them the flexibilities that you don't have with a passenger car. And that's the huge growth that we're seeing in the segment. If you look around the market, everyone's doing something to his pickup to make it different. So what else could we do in a narrow portfolio to, to build a brand? And we've been looking around and in the UK we saw there was a, an Arctic truck. And we thought, let's bring it in and let's have a look at what we could do in South Africa. So we engaged with Arctic trucks uh, at the back end of 2017. They came out here in January 2018. And we built the first prototype. And we thought, looking at the truck and where we could price it, what we could add to it, it would be a great opportunity. Not in massive volumes, but it would give Isuzu some, something to talk about. And that's why we did it initially. And we were going to build it the same way Arctic Trucks does it. So you build it, pick up, and then you modify it. But we've changed the philosophy completely. 
instead of building a complete truck and then modifying it, we, we're going to take it from first levels of build and build it into an Arctic truck. So there's no rework. We build it as an Arctic truck. So it goes through the same body shop, it goes through the same painting process and the same assembly line. Look, it's going to go a lot slower than our normal build. A normal vehicle takes about three days to go through this plant, where an Arctic uh, truck would take up to seven or eight days. As an example, every four minutes, a Isuzu D-Max pickup comes out the plant, but only two of the um, Isuzu Arctic trucks uh, a week. And th that gives you an idea of the difference. It's, it's not an easy build. It's going to have the same methodology we have in terms of manufacturing principles. It's built the same way as an Isuzu D-Max. It goes through all the quality checks because this is an extreme vehicle and we need the reliability that we're known for. Because an Isuzu is well known for reliable, durable vehicles and we are committed to that with the Arctic truck. For us it's very important to not be either seen as or in fact not be an aftermarket solution. We, we, everything we do is integrated with the manufacturer. And then the fact that Isuzu has invited us into their production lines as well with our solutions means that a lot of focus, of course, on standardization, on process, in-process control. So there's all the quality standards that apply to the Arctic truck manual, process manual, is carried over into our Isuzu manufacturing systems quality standards as well. I mean, this is our Halo product, and the ones we've taken through the plant, there's been so much interest in this. Uh, the guys are so enthusiastic about it because it's something very special, very unique, and because it goes down our production line, everybody plays a part in that. So for the whole workforce, it just creates a lot, a lot of enthusiasm. And one of our lean manufacturing principles, obviously, is continuous improvement. And we've seen a whole lot from the guys themselves, you know, from the bottom up, where they come up with ideas. These guys that build it every day, they say, hey, wait a minute, I can see a better way that I can do this. They're the experts, right? So what changes needed to be made to convert a D-Max into an Arctic truck? The conversions are quite complex. There's a lot of uh, cutting done on the front panel upper and also on the A-pillar at the bottom of the wheelhouse. This is to accommodate the Fox suspension and the massive wheels that we're putting on this vehicle so that you've got clearance for the turning and when the vehicle articulates obviously in the rough terrain. There's also work done on the chassis where we're doing some cutting on the chassis, especially around the cab mounts. And we also got brackets because of the race. We're raising the height of the Arctic. I think in total is about 125 millimeters. So some real significant changes. But once those are completed, it returns back onto the D-Max production line. Besides the body modifications, all your processes, process that takes place in your normal building paint shop is also applied to the Arctic truck. So everything gets sealed and waxed and taken through the whole paint shop process as per the cut and build. So you've got that peace of mind with your five-year warranty on the, on the body. Yes, and that really is crucial. And at the heart of it all, the AT35 remains a D-Max, be it a beefier, more broad-shouldered version, which did pose some challenges for the production team. Because of the big wheels, it doesn't fit on all our conveyors. So one of the changes we had to make is we have to put on slave wheels and only towards the end of the process can we put on the proper optic wheels because it just, our conveyor system just doesn't allow for that. The final transformation from D-Max to Arctic Truck happens once it's completed its production line journey. Yeah, the team fit the fenders before it heads off for final inspection and sign off. Yeah, I must say they've been a pleasure to work with and the way the team in South Africa has taken on our product and split up the production from their chassis manufacturing to their body shop, paint shop, all the way through the assembly line is fantastic to see. I mean, when, when we brought the concept and we studied it, one thing we know from our past experience is that something that works in another market doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work yet. So even though Arctic Trucks have done a lot of extensive work in Europe, we said, okay, the conditions are different. So we needed to do something here to give ourselves confidence in the product in these operating conditions. So we've done all our local durabilities to make sure that the modifications, the changes we made to the vehicle to make it an Arctic, will survive our market and our driving behavior.